Imagine you're a wizard. You and your party have been in combat with a vicious frost one. Most of you are unconscious, and the worm is going in for the kill. You yourself have used up most of your spell slots, and as you're fighting to catch your breath, you see the monster about to end your best friend. You guys have been friends for years. They're everything to you, and the thought of their death is too much to bear. And out of sheer desperation to save your friend, you use your own life force to be able to cast a high-level spell in extra time. You feel your body getting internally massacred, but then you release your spell. No, not Fireball! You then release your spell. Call Lightning. The Arcane Lightning then rains down from the sky and delivers the final blow to the creature. As the worm falls, you also fall to your knees and cough up blood, but you have saved your friend from the clutches of certain death. Today in class, we'll be talking about a new mechanic idea that originated on TikTok. Spell Overclocking. Welcome back to D&D &D 101. So, what is Spell Overclocking? To be perfectly candid, Spell Overclocking is not in any official source book and at this point is more of a cool idea for a homebrew rule. But it has gained a bit of traction on TikTok. And I, for one, love the idea. Spell overclocking is the idea that a spellcaster can push the limits of their power and use their own life force to cast a spell when they're out of slots for the spell they want to cast. This is a very interesting way for a spellcaster to have an awesome hero moment as they push beyond their limits to protect their friends or refuse to fall to a mortal enemy. To a degree, the mechanics of this idea are kind of up for debate. The hardest part about this mechanic is how to properly balance it. One popular way to balance it is to have the caster take a level of exhaustion for each level of the spell they're trying to cast. If you're using it this way, then the highest spell that you would ever be able to cast would be 6th level, since after 6 levels of exhaustion, you, well, die. Although this is not a bad way to balance it, I actually have come up with my own way to balance it. So let's actually take a detour and explain the method I used for concocting this. Whenever you have a very powerful idea like this, you have to balance it with a great price or penalty. To obtain, something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. A good example of this way of thinking is actually in Matt Colville's video on saying no. Our method is in that same spirit, but not quite as harsh. In my method... In my world, everyone's a pony, and they all eat rainbows and poop butterflies. For every level that's being cast, the caster must spend two hit dice. However, instead of just losing the dice, the caster must roll the dice and take damage from whatever the result is. For example, if you're a wizard overclocking a third level spell, then you'll spend and roll six hit dice, 66, and take damage after you cast your spell. With this method, even with the max dice, the average possible damage is still generally lower than the max hit points of most casters. The best thing about this mechanic is that since it's not official, you're free to come up with your own way to balance it. However, I would still strongly advise that you make the cost very steep. You're essentially breaking the rules and laws of the arcane in the world of D&D. It shouldn't be free by any means. However, when all is said and done, that's all part of the fun. You guys are free to go your own way and make your own awesome games with this freedom. And if you want it to be super overpowered, it can be. And that concludes my lesson on spell overclocking. Thank you guys so much for watching. For homework today, comment below what your favorite optional mechanic is. Class dismissed.